Welcome to Weekly Gaming Blast. How, I am your host, Akibana Zero. And I am Rude the Gamer. Hello. How's it going, man? Yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad. How are you? Very, very well, actually. Again, once more, sunny here in Brighton, and I'm sitting inside. Yep, uh, exactly the same down here. Sunny in Kent, and I'm sitting inside. <laughs> <laughs> exactly as God intended. Yeah, of course. It's always good weather if you're a gamer. Yeah, it, 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 it's never bad. It's never bad weather, right? It's always it's always gonna be that way with the good. No, because it's always outside. Yeah, that's the good thing. It's always outside, so you never have to worry about it. Exactly, exactly. That's a good thing about being a gamer. You don't worry about the weather. You don't worry about the weather. So, uh, what have you been playing this week? Uh, I have been playing. I am set sooner Ooh, this week. A bit late to the party um, on that one, huh? I am very late to the party. Um, I picked it up because it's currently uh, it's currently on sale on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, oh, how, uh, how much is it now? I didn't I didn't catch that. It's, it's twenty pounds nine pence. Twenty pounds nine pence. Not not bad. Not bad. No, definitely not bad. I mean, it definitely, especially if it um, lives up to what it's currently doing, because uh, it's very 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 JRPG at the moment, mm. um, which is my favourite genre. So that's fine. Um, so basically, if I can get a good 30, 40 hours out of a £20 game, that's most definitely worth the money, at the Absolutely. very least. Um, at the moment, very, very, very archetypal of the JRPG, JRPG genre. Um, so turn-based battles, um, like beautifully designed locales. Um, the soundtrack, however, is slightly different than I expected. I expected a very classic... I, I expected a very classic JRPG score, but what you what I Am Setsuna has is it has something closer to a Ghibli film sort of sound. So very moving orchestral guitar pieces. Uh, no, not guitar. Wrong instrument. Piano. Piano. Um, piano. Yeah, very orchestral <laughs> piano um, pieces that are just beautiful and also very distinct in each area. So the music is... I would actually argue better than most classic JRPGs, with a couple of notable exceptions. Um, and the slight tweaks to the turn-based during battles is fantastic. And now that I've got the hang of it, it's really, really enjoyable. I've been actually kind of turned off from getting that game because I've heard from some people who expected it to be more like Chrono Trigger. It was it was a big disappointment. Um, it has elements of Chrono Trigger, very strong elements of Chrono Trigger, actually. Um, but I, I tend to be the sort of person who doesn't go into a game expecting another game. Yeah, that, that, that is a fact indeed. Mm. We shouldn't go um, in expecting another game because why not just play that game, right? Yeah, precisely. I mean, if, I mean, with certain exceptions, with the, there's certain exceptions. I mean, obviously if you're playing another game in a franchise, to have expectations is fair enough. So if you go into say Dark Souls 3 after playing Dark Souls 2, you will have a certain expectation and that's that's perfectly understandable. But if you're, say, going from, uh, just to use an example, if you're going from Dark Souls 2 to a game that's supposedly like Dark Souls, like Lords of the Fallen, you shouldn't really take those preconceptions over because they will take the way you see the, the, the latter game, but for better or worse. Yeah, more or less. I've been uh, playing the Monster Hunter uh, demo on Switch. Oh, the XX one? Yes. Oh, the, how is it? The hardcore one. <laughs> it's really yeah. good. It's really <laughs> good. I was actually very, very concerned about how the graphics would look on Switch because it's an upscale, right? But it's actually really polished and looks really, really gorgeous. Nice and colorful, bright. It's it's really it's really good. When you say it's an upscale, do you mean that... Because I'm not a fan of Monster Hunter, so I haven't been really following it. But... Is XX an upscale from X on No, no, no. Uh, it's, a, it, it's upscaled from the 3DS version. This is not a brand new game for, for Switch. It is a 3DS game. Yeah, sorry. I thought you might have been aware of that. It's a 3DS That's game okay, that has been upscaled to be a Switch game. But it looks amazing. Okay. I might give that um, a, a download on Switch if I stop playing set sooner. Do you have a Japanese minutes. account? No. That's oh, the you have place to have one. It. Yeah, but it's very easy to make. Just it's super easy to make. So it's nothing, nothing too difficult. You don't have to go. You don't have to fiddle with Japanese menus and all that kind of stuff. The game is in Japanese, but 
it's really like you just pick a monster and then you pick a class a class you pick a weapon and then it just sends you into the into the mission so you don't have any weird menus to fiddle with and all that kind of stuff okay i mean the thing is most of the time because because we're gamers and we've both been gamers for quite a while even if you're playing a game that isn't in your native language you can pick up the buttons at least oh yeah more or less yeah, yeah. well it, it might like even I struggled a tiny bit figuring out the buttons because they're a little different from the uh, from the 3DS version. But yeah, I mean you get the hang of it eventually. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I mean you're a Souls player. I mean you like this kind of like heavy, realistic, committed combat. So I think you might actually enjoy Monster Hunter. No, I have played Monster Hunter and really didn't get on with it. Oh really? Oh. I I I, oh. Um, I I I don't know. I just felt like it was wasted potential. There's a lot of things in the game I do like, but there's but it's ruined by the things that I don't. Like what, for example? Uh, I find it very, very clunky to play. Mm. Um, and when I commit to a move, I want the move that I've committed to to actually be effective, where in Monster Hunter, I couldn't make that so. I would press a button and it would come out long after I expected it to happen. So... Whereas with Dark Souls, you press dodge and it dodges. Um, with Monster Hunter, I was pressing dodge and there was just the minutest delay and that was enough to put me off. Because it's just like, when I dodge, I want to dodge. That's, mm. that's the whole idea. That's why I press buttons. Um, and also, I, don't, I, I, I didn't like the uh, level-based design of it. I see. Either. Well, what did you play it on? The PSP or something? Uh, I played the... I played the one on PSP, I think the second one that was on PSP, and then I tried it again on Wii U when uh, Wii U, yeah, on Wii U when uh, Tri Ultimate came out. That was actually on the that was on the Wii U or the Wii. I think Tri came out on the Wii, and then mm. Tri Ultimate came out on the Wii U. Ah, okay. Because I distinctly remember using voice chat, which the Wii U did have, but Wii didn't, so therefore mm. it must have been the Wii U. Well, give the demo a go. I think it's a lot... I, I think the PSP version is terrible. Like, the second Monster Hunter that came out on PSP was actually really bad. I couldn't get on with that at all. The controls were horrendous. But uh, I think I think it feels a little snappier. It's still like that heavy, committed type of combat. But if you really get into it, like, if you play, pick up, like, light weapons and stuff, you actually feel like it's more responsive. Mm. So anyway, uh, um, let's... Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, I actually, no. What I'll do is I'll give you another week on it and then I'll ask you next week about Monster Hunter. So, so you, that way you've been given more time with it because I was about to ask a very meta question. <laughs> so don't worry. A meta question. All right. Mm. Well, that's fine. Let's, uh, let's uh, without further ado, let's dive into the news because we got plenty. First, yeah, the... it's been a really busy week. First, the lightning quick, fast ones. You, you, you went through the Splatoon to Splatfest uh, recently. How was that? It was a Splatfest. Mm. Um, as, as, I, as I said in my review, as I said last week, Splatoon 2 is Splatoon 1. There's, there's no difference at all in between the two games, really. Um, so Splatfest 2, Mayo versus Ketchup, Team Mayo 1. Yeah, Team Mayo 1, and that was worldwide, I believe. Um, so yeah, I've I've got my little sea snails for upgrading equipment, which I will use at some point, I guess. Um, and everything has just gone back to normal, which is nice. It's actually nice that everything's gone back to normal in the game. So you didn't totally enjoy the Splatfest? No, because I've done them all before. Hmm. It, it's it's the same thing as last time. So I'm kind of still, in a way, burnt out from the previous set of Splatfests. So. That fact it's exactly the same and not really any changes happened. It's just um, just means I'm a little burnt out. That didn't that doesn't mean I didn't play it until I was max level or anything. But yeah. yeah. It was a slap fest. Well boo to Team Mayo. I mean Team Ketchup should have clearly taken it, as far as I oh, yeah. am I concerned. <laughs> we totally should have done. And in terms of votes, Team Ketchup trounced worldwide. Team Ketchup was the most subscribed team. Jesus. Anywho, moving on. Gearbox has finally announced another project. They're calling it Project 1v1, which apparently is going to be a combination of a 
first person sh it's gonna be a first person shooter and it's gonna the way they're putting it is it's gonna combine fast-paced fps action with card game meta game strategy mm -hmm. i have no idea what that's supposed to mean um I don't, see i've i've i must admit i've not heard about this but um the only way i can think that that would work because they have done something similar did you ever play kingdom hearts chain of memories uh king of no because uh, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories was an action RPG with platforming elements, but it but the combat was entirely based on cards. Hmm. And how did that work? So if they, uh, arguably well. In fact, I'd say it was it's it was very enjoyable. I didn't expect it to work half as well as it did. Um, and but it's still. Because I think if Chain of Memories was its own game, with its own characters and its own world, it would have been easily an 8 or 9. But because it was following on from Kingdom Hearts, and because the Kingdom Hearts combat system is actually significantly better, it, it would have dropped down to a 6 or 7 if I was to rank it. Uh -huh. Or rate it, rather. I see. So it worked, but it would have worked better if, it was, if they weren't tying it to a pre-existing pre franchise. But well, this is interesting because we're talking about a first-person shooter, which is like really Twitch gamey kind of thing. So where does the card game meta element come into play? And I think it, I think it's, I think we're probably all thinking about this in terms of are there card elements into them? Maybe it's not even any card element whatsoever. Maybe it just will make you feel like there's some card game element to it. And it's supposed to be like a 1v1 kind of thing. That's what the project is titled. So who knows? I'm wondering whether it could uh, it could end up playing similar to Vats in Fallout. Hmm. That actually, hmm, that might actually be be something right over there. Like you're, but how would you if you're playing against another person? How would you freeze time like that? Uh, maybe it would just go. Maybe it would just literally go into turn based to that circumstance. So similar to what would happen in I don't know a D and D game. Hmm. I wonder if that would feel very like getting get ripping you out of the action though. Like it might be feel very annoying. Like you're running around, you're buzzing around in the game, and then suddenly, woo, turn based combat. <laughs> yeah. Um, then again, I play JRPG, so I'm used to that happening. Oh, that's fair. Well, we're not gonna. For some people, they're not gonna have to wait very long to see what that's gonna be like because they already have a website up project 1v1.com where you can actually sign up for the technical test that is going to be coming up very soon so i'm going to definitely be checking that out so head over to project 1v1.com and yeah sign up and see if you're lucky and let us know if how it, how it plays right yeah please let us know absolutely moving on horizon dlc dated finally you're a horizon player. yes 7th of november um I absolutely love Horizon. I think it's an absolutely, absolutely brilliant game. And um, I'm nowhere near the end. I've been playing it for well over 20 hours. And I looked and I finally zoomed out on the map in the last couple of days. I have not made much progress in that game <laughs> in like more than 20 hours. Because it's just, it's, I don't usually like games that are like that, that have a lot of objectives and things to find. I find it really frustrating. Uh, like Assassin's Creed, can't stand it. But there's something about that world and something about that game that makes me want to just explore. And I think that's the sign that they've made a perfect, they've made a brilliant game. I haven't had the time to buy it. I haven't had the, the time to play it. It's, I, I feel so behind, but I, that every time I look at that game, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. I really want to get into it. It is. It's beautiful. Um, and to, to the fact they're expanding it with what seems to be, I mean, it, they showed it off at E3 seems to be a massive expansion this new campaign um taking place in a part of the map which is previously unexplored um or part of the world sorry that's previously unexplored um so i'm very very excited very excited so the release date for that is 7th of november 7th of november great so mm -hmm. hang on to your horses everyone and yeah get ready for some horizon dlc moving right along you you introduce another piece of 
interesting news here that the AM2R creator acquired was acquired by the Ori dev. Yes, um, the the guy that was behind the another Metroid Two remake um, that um, Nintendo DMCA'd um, has been acquired by um, Moon Studios, the people that create uh, that created Ori and the Blind Forest and are creating its sequel, um, and that is just fantastic. Um, I'm so glad that such a talented individual has been snapped up by such an amazing studio, if I'm honest. Um, because I don't have an Xbox, so I've never been able to, you know, fully play to the end Ori and the Blind Forest. Uh, but the bits I've played of it, it is a fantastic and beautiful game. Um, so the fact that someone who puts so much love and care into updating Metroid 2... Um, that for him to be snapped up by a studio that creates such beautiful and engrossing games, I, I couldn't be happier. Do I smell another Metroidvania in the horizon? Maybe. Well, that's what Ori and the Blind Forest is. Yeah, it is. It, it, I, so, I, I haven't been able to play it either. I don't have an Xbox. Up. You can play it on Windows, I guess. But yeah, I haven't felt really encouraged to play it yet. But it does look beautiful. And it does sound like a very interesting game. It's, uh, it is a fantastic game, or from what I've played of it, it's a fantastic game. Well, be sure to give that a try sometime. Moving on, one more piece of rapid-fire news here. Hellblade Senua Sacrifice reviews are extremely positive. It has hit a Metacritic score of 82% as of last time I checked. That's mm -hmm. actually pretty positive. It is, and it's a very good... Um, I think it's a very good uh, indicator for... I've always I've been struggling to think how to refer to this game because it's an indie indie mentality game made by a triple A studio. Yeah, it's made by um, Team Ninja, right? Yeah, and I, I mean I've kind of settled in my head on Indie Plus. <laughs> indie Plus. That's what that that that's how I'm re I'm referring to it in my head is an Indie Plus game. So it's not an it's not an indie game in budget, but it's an indie game in mindset, and. It does look amazing. It looks incredible. Um, and from what I've uh, heard about it and seen various reviews, um, mechanically and thematically, it looks brilliant and sounds very unique. It does. It doesn't have a HUD. Like, there's no life bar anywhere or anything for you to, like, gauge what's going on. There's... Uh, there. I, you were telling me earlier that, you know, the game doesn't delete your save, but apparently... But I've heard that it does. Like, if you die too many times, the game deletes your save. That's, um, they've, they've, they've uncovered, actually. That's a thematic thing. A thematic thing. So basically, it's something the devs have put in to actually increase the, uh, the foreboding nature of the game overall. Ah. So it's a very kind of uh, Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem sort of move, where they're unnerving the player to further increase the atmosphere of the game, which uh, I'm hesitant to call it a lie. It is a lie, but I see why they've done it. Hmm. Okay. Well, still, I, I, I have that in the pipeline. I want to start making videos of that because I'm pretty sure this game is the kind of game that would really, really bring out the salt in me. Oh, yes, it will. From what I've seen, it will <laughs> definitely... It, is it this 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 will be your um your uh, kind of graduation from dark souls sort of levels of salt i think okay because blight town isn't giving me enough trouble already as it is right no you've got an entire game of blight town instead <laughs> uh that okay okay absolutely I'm, I'm i'm ready i'll take it on i'll take it on so moving on let's take a look at some controversial stuff shall we Starting off with my favorite company in the whole world, Capcom, dear Capcom, has started serving up DMCA's to makers of mods for Street Fighter V. Specifically the ones that have okay. been selling their mods, specifically. Interesting. Okay, I've got thoughts on this, but what are your thoughts on this? I am... Okay. I'm fine with mods existing. I like the idea. I like that that players have the ability to make their own stuff for the game and modify it the way they want to. That is fantastic. 
Now, the whole idea of them selling it, there's a bit of a gray area right over there. But I still think that it's okay because it's something that the player created. They spent time creating it. It's not that they're necessarily infringing on something that Capcom made. Like, if they were using actual real assets from the game to make the skins, eh, maybe. But they're making it themselves and putting it on the character, so why can they not make a little bit of money out of that? Okay, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I I must admit I don't have a great amount of personal experience with mods because I've never been a PC gamer. And uh, mods just don't seem to be... Uh, the, the, the big companies don't seem to want to accept mods for, for consoles. So, uh, especially Sony. But then again, Sony don't seem to like anything that players want. But at the same time, uh, because I know that mods are supposed to be free, and they always have been. So I kind of sympathize with people having an issue with mods being paid for. My big issue with this is Capcom's involvement. Why are they getting involved? Hmm. Well, they're getting involved um, because obviously they want they want to sell their own skins. And if somebody, if they didn't, they want to sell, let's take Jury's skin as an example, okay? Jury was yeah. one of the most hotly debated uh, alterations to her, like, already established design from Street Fighter 4. And it's not like Jury has been a character in the, in the Street Fighter universe for decades now, right? It's not like Ken. Uh, but they decided to change her design from one iteration to the next. And people were like, why aren't you giving us her classic costume, which is much better? But suddenly somebody comes along and makes his own skin, which actually was is a fact. I don't know if he started selling it, but it looked great. It looked great. And now they came out with their own, like, their own ju nostalgia jury costume. For sale, of course. So you got mm. that, and they want they want to be able they don't want to allow you to be able to do that to make your own costume and sell it from classics. They want to be able to sell you the nostalgia skin by themselves. Um, well, that would be that would be entirely justified. It would be entirely vindicated if it weren't for the fact that Capcom aren't listening to the fans. Mm. If 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 a modder has created a very popular, I'm assuming, uh, nostalgia costume for jury. Don't get arsy with the players that they are enthralled with that when you're not giving them that. If they want it, and if players... The issue I have, the issue, the main issue I have with Capcom and Street Fighter V is the fact that they're not listening to the player base. And the player base is what's going to make sure the game runs the full length of time that Capcom intended to. Give the players what they want. It's not that hard. Um, we have waited, as players, we have waited far too long for the Alex and Ibuki nostalgia costumes. Which came out a little bit recently, I don't think a few I'm... weeks ago. I think it was a few weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a few weeks ago. Why weren't they out sooner? If if Colleen could launch with her nostalgia costume, why not Ibuki and Alex? I know, right? That is that that, that that's it. That's the hugest problem. And you said that yourself. They're not listening to the player base. They're not listening to the fans. They're not listening to us, the people who are actually bleeding a lot of time and money into Street Fighter. That's that. That's the biggest issue yeah. with Capcom right now and Street Fighter because Capcom has been doing okay in other areas besides Mega Man. Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, it, I, I won't. I won't lie that Capcom's been doing great in other areas and with Street Fighter Five as well to an extent. They are doing fantastically. There's there's elements of Street Fighter Five I really really like, but they're not listening to the fans and that is reflecting quite quite succinctly I think in what they're putting out at the moment and also the response to the game at the moment yeah well i'm gonna toss this out to our viewers as well if you have something to say on this subject please uh make sure you do so in the comments moving right along 
Ah, uh, the continued uh, stream of, uh, you know, controversies involving single-player games with microtransactions. Shadow of Mordor finally revealed a microtransaction scheme complete with XP boosts and, uh, you know, faster building or whatever the hell. I don't even know what this game is, uh, what, what this game is like at this point. <laughs> Warner Brothers. I'm really not surprised anymore that's that's so i mean i i can understand games that are multiplayer maybe they're free or maybe they you know you don't pay a lot of money for them or it's like it's generally something that people play for a very extensive amount of time like multiplayer games you do i'm okay with there being microtransactions that stuff but a single player game that you complete at some point, and it's done. Um, I must admit, I'm I'm entirely against the idea of microtransactions in in full price games. Anyway. Yeah, that is a fact. I, I, I'm also I fundamentally it. disagree with that. Mm. You're paying fifty, uh, like fifty pound, like maybe more, for the game. There shouldn't be microtransactions in it. No, flat out there shouldn't. I mean, you're you're paying. Yeah, like you said, you're paying a, a pretty penny over there for a triple A title. A triple A title should include the game, the entirety of it. <laughs> yes, entirely. And um, that also goes for DLC in general, I feel. Um, I mean, there's some occasions, and, the, uh, and I can think of several off the top of my head, in which the DLC for a full price game has been worth it. Dark Souls 3, for instance. Um, one of the few season passes I've bought and absolutely loved both DLCs. Um, but a game like this should not have EXP boost microtransactions. Where is the enjoyment in that for a player? What is even the point? I mean, did, did anybody ask for this? I mean, I'm curious. Is there anybody out there who felt that they wanted an XP boost in their single player role playing game? By all means, please sound off in the comments, but I, 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 I personally don't see where somebody would want something like that. Agreed. And if, I mean, if you want to finish the game so quickly, then, I mean, you know, don't buy it to begin with, if it's such a pain in the ass. Anywho, uh, this is, I don't know if I could call this a controversial, controversial topic or whatnot, but I had to put it somewhere. So, eSports at the Olympics of 2024. Apparently, that is controversial. It is controversial, <laughs> isn't it? So, Paris, the Paris Committee for 2024 has said, we are open to the to putting some esports into the Olympic Games. Okay. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Terrible idea. Terrible idea right off the bat. <laughs> Why? Um... Esports is firstly nowhere near big enough for that. If if say Street Fighter V or League of Legends or whatever was pulling in the sort of audiences that Olympic sports t pull in, then maybe. But esports has not been around really long enough to have that sort of audience. Um, and I don't think the the viewing figures of the champion, uh, the Street Fighter tournament at Evo were that high, even if you combine together all of the different means of viewing it. Um, plus also, when it's when they say esports at the Olympics, what esports do they mean? Is is another question. Probably something along the lines of yeah, those big games that are considered very big in the esports arena, like League of Legends, like. Uh... Like Street Fighter. Or heck, why don't we put in FIFA? I mean, there's real soccer in the Olympics. Why don't we just toss FIFA in there? Let's get virtual soccer as well. Yeah, we might as well. But the thing is, like, I've always, I've always, I mean, this may be quite traditionalist of me, but I've always viewed the Olympics as kind of like essentially a showground for the, the best athletes in the world. Um, to patriotically or not, show, uh, represent their country and show to the world that they are the best at what they do. I don't think esports need that. 
plus also would, would that mean there would be a national tournament of league and then the best team in the UK would perform in the Olympic I mean what I don't understand how it would work I just don't get it well we, we could we could give South Korea the the the, 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 the reigning champion title for the re for the next 20 years if that's the case yeah precisely plus also I mean technically Call of Duty is an eSport so but that's most definitely not the sort of thing you could show on TV in the same way you could show the Olympics no I mean it just seems like a very niche idea it seems a niche idea, and it seems like an idea that it seems unnecessary to me. Because, like you said, first of all, like there is no such thing as a national Street Fighter team or a national League of Legends team or Counter Strike team. Uh, yeah, sure, some of the teams are actually just comprised of people from the same nation. Especially back in the Counter Strike days, you had Mouse Sports, for example. It was a fully, it was fully comprised of German players. But there's another thing here about putting esports into the Olympics is that what is the point? I mean, I know that some people sometimes compare certain games like Street Fighter or uh, StarCraft to games like chess. And chess is in the Olympics, as far as I know. Is it? I might be wrong. Please tell me if I'm wrong on this. But even still, yes, these games are games of skill. But we don't need them to be in the Olympics because if we were to basically say we're making a competition that the granddaddy of competitions for esports, they could have their own. But then again, yeah. we've got League of Legends Worlds. That is pretty big for what it is and that is doing just fine. They don't need a granddaddy of sports events, nor, nor does Street Fighter need it. What does Street Fighter have right now? Evo, Capcom Pro Tour, all of this stuff. We don't, we don't need, we don't need an Olympics for esports because it just doesn't. Yeah, and that's just going to basically turn esports, in my opinion, it's going to turn esports into yet just another way for sponsors to sell crap at you. Not that they're not already. Yeah, I mean, Evo and the Capcom Cup are key examples of that. They are, but still, you kind of still see a little bit of that purity, gr pure grassroots. Uh, Esports uh, commu gaming community still co still existing there, in in nor in regular sports that's gone out the window entirely. But that's very true. Esports are still very very young for that kind of thing, and I really wouldn't want them to like completely go left field like that. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the thing is, I really enjoy. It. I mean, I I never I I I will level. I never understood sport. It, well, not sports. I do understand sports. That's the wrong term. <laughs> I never understood the fascination, the kind of excitement of watching sports until I got into esports. That that's so. Yeah. Now I can watch Street Fighter Five, and I get the same. Well, maybe not Street Fighter Five. Uh, better example. I can watch Guilty Gear, and. I get the same excitement watching that. I mean, I got more excitement out of watching the top eight than I think even most of my friends would have got out of the World Cup. Um, but now I understand, but I still don't... I, I, we have these sorts of things already. I mean, this weekend alone, there's VS fighting. Yeah. There's, there's a Street Fighter tournament almost every other weekend. It's... What the hell? We don't need another one. When yeah. is it going to happen? That's the thing. When would it happen? What would it replace? Would it, like, we would not, if we were to do a, a sports Olympics, would it happen every four years? And during the fourth year, we wouldn't have a Capcom Pro Tour. That's not going to happen. No, Capcom like their money too much. Yeah. And you don't, and what do you want? Do you want players to start burning out? Anywho. That is that with that one. If you guys have any opinions about the Olympics and esports being at the Olympics, please, by all means, let us know in the comment section. And finally, the big and positive news. We've had a bit of a landslide of news coming right from Arc Systems Works. And both Rue and I are super excited about this stuff. Yeah, boy. I'll let, I'll let, I'll let you take it away on this one. Oh, my God. Where to start? Um... Obviously, like the smallest bit of news is that the, the, the DBZ beta, which was pushed back, is now set. 
mm-hmm. I believe the sign-ups are the 26th of August. Yes. Um, which I expect to see you there. Um, then the next uh, the next interesting one was the, the they've dated Jubei and um, the uh, the Blaze Blue Central Fiction 2.0 batch, uh, which is the 31st of August, um, which was a lot sooner than I expected. Oh yeah, I thought we I thought we were be, going to be talking about a location test in September or or October. Well, yeah, they said they said summer. Um, so I expected, yeah, September, October. I expect I, I at least expected summer to be out of the <laughs> way first. Um, but instead, it's now. It's this month, and um, that just means that I'm I'm going to have a really busy busy end of this month. Um, just simply because Jube, I've waited so long. So long for Jube, um, and he's finally coming. And the 2.0 patch, which is going to change absolutely bloody everything, um, that's it's, it's going to change everything about how I play the game and who I play. Um, please don't break his IOE, please don't break his IOE, please don't break his IOE. By the sounds of things, his IOE hasn't been broken. Okay. Um, she was never top top tier. So she wouldn't have dropped down. Quite a lot of the top tier ones have been dropped down a bit, which is good. I think a lot of the top tier characters in Blaze Blue Central Fiction needed to be whacked with that fucking nerf hammer <laughs> um, because they need that. Oh my god, they needed it. Um, they really needed it. Um, like uh, Izanami uh, needed to be hit with a nerf hammer. So did Nine, the Phantom. Um, and they have, which is great. It means it means I can play the game again and <laughs> not get screwed over by his army constantly. Um, and then the final piece of news is there was a recent um, interview with uh, Mori, I think he is, Mori-san, uh, the uh, director of Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, in which um, he went into a few details about the game. Um, and the game is shaping up to be amazing. Um, so, like, as, as a few things, he said that um, although they have an idea of what characters they want to be in the game, um, quite a lot of the picks are going to be down to the fans. So I don't know whether that's going to, because there's no word on it yet whether it's going to be set out as a poll or, like, similar to what they did with um, Smash 4, um, or whether it's just going to be over Twitter, like, what people are talking about. But I think it's fantastic that they are actually thinking about the fans in this respect as to what what the fans want from these four franchises, like four franchises they're mashing into one game. Um, what fa- what characters the fans want from those four franchises. Um, so I think that's a really cool thing they're doing. Um, the second thing is that they are reworking a lot of the sprite work and characters uh, from some of the games because some of the uh, Undernight and Birth characters do not will not fit they, they've said they won't fit aesthetically with the rest of the cast. So um, that means certain characters are going to change, and that's that's great. I wonder how they're going to do it and who 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 they're talking about. Um, I mean, if Carmine ends up being in it, I'm I'm sold. You're you're gonna you're just gonna have a mental breakdown right over there. It's like, oh my god, yeah. oh, here we yeah. are. <laughs> if if Car if Carmine from Undernight and Akihiko from Blaze uh, from Persona Four Arena are both in it, there's my team. I don't need anyone else. <laughs> um, and um, the, the, the they've they've already said as well that um, guilty gear characters won't be in it. Yeah. Um, which is is fair enough. Um, but the reason they gave is very interesting because it ties back in. It ties into a, into another point about uh, cross tag battle, and the reason they've given is that the. Guilty Gear story isn't over. Mm. That bit of information is so tantalizing. Um, because Did they say the Guilty Gear story or the Blaze Blue story? That's what I thought. The Guilty Gear story isn't over. Uh. But also that ties into them it ties into the fact they did say that Blaze Blue isn't over either. Um, but Ragnar's story is. Uh-huh. So, um, I mean, you haven't finished Central Fiction's story, I'm assuming. No. Will you? 
I, I probably will. Good. You need to. Um, <laughs> but it's interesting. Like, I, I find it very, very interesting that they have explicitly stated that Guilty Gear... So this means Guilty Gear, specifically Guilty Gear XR, isn't finished yet. Um, I mean, if you tie that in with the fact that uh, uh, Daisuke Ishiwatari said that there are certain characters he wants to bring to XR, then that means maybe Rev 3. That would be great. That, that would, would be super. That. that would be super. Um, at which point I'm going to um, make a comment to the audience. Put down in the comments which Guilty Gear returning character you would like to be if they were to do a Rev 3. Um, to give you a couple of examples, uh, Daisuke himself said that he wants Robo Kai. Mm. Interesting idea. Um, and I would like Angie Mito. Oh, yeah. He's cool. He's cool. Yes. They need Angie. We need Mito. Bike so. Who else are we meeting? Uh, who else are we missing from the original cast? Uh, oh. uh, the uh, Testament. Oh, Testament was cool. Testament. Yeah, we need Testament. That side. Yeah. Testament. Um, ABA would be cool as well. ABA would be great, yeah. But anyway, um, let's leave the rest of the to the viewers. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah that is uh, those are the news. That's the news that we picked for this week. There's been a few more about so Nintendo getting sued and stuff. But hey, that's uh, that's just a regular thing all the time, right? <laughs> At this point, <laughs> Nintendo in trouble. What a th what a shock. Oh hey, I mean, I made a controller because this is literally what the thing is. It's like we made a controller that goes side by side on the on a mobile phone. So you're infringing on our patent with the switch. <laughs> Oh, just stupid. Uh, I think it's the funniest thing I've read this, I've read this week. <laughs> Anywho, you got anything to share with the audience, man? Uh, yeah, um, I uh, update on the channel. I still stream every Tuesday and Saturday. Um, the my I had a YouTube video go up this afternoon. So uh, Doom Episode 3 is now live on YouTube as well. Um, and as a final thing, I'm going to be reviewing well i still haven't uh my review for slime sand is going to go up uh early next week as well awesome on awesome can't wait can't wait to, to watch or read are you writing it or re or it's a written it? review it's a written okay can't wait to read that maybe i might pick up the game actually you said not to pick up the game so i'll just leave it I, I, it's a great it's a great game but if you do if you're not a fan of that particular genre of games then it's not worth the money Ah, in my all right, gotcha. Uh, for me, as always, uh, another another weekend, another Dark Souls video. Uh, spoiler alert: this one has a little bit of extra salt. I don't know if you remembered a while back, one of my episodes was titled "Don't Watch This." Oh, are you doing a "Don't Watch This" sequel? It is the return of the "Don't Watch This." <laughs> oh, amazing! Fantastic! I really look. I'm so looking forward to that. <laughs> I, I I really I really went off the rails. So yeah. Okay. So that's uh, that's gonna do it for this week, everyone. So thanks for everybody for watching. You can follow us on our Twitter handles here right below us. And uh, as always, I, I've been Akibana Zero. And I've been Rude the Gamer. And uh, yeah, we will catch you next week with more gaming news. See you soon.